Welcome to Charlas with Mental Monarchs. For those of you that don't know what charla is, it means a chat. We are going to sit here and chat with you about how mental health affects the Latin community. It's your host, Brooke Williamson. And Maelia Samsinas, and we are the co-founders of Mental Monarchs. This is our very first charla, and we are so excited to have our first guest, who is a published author. Her name is Maria Luisa Samsinas. She's a freelance writer and certified parent coach with the Academy of Parenting Education and Coaching and Redirecting Children's Behavior and Redirecting for a Cooperative Classroom. Make sure to follow her on Twitter at Power of Family and Instagram at ML Salcines Power of Family or contact her on her blog FamilyLifeAndFindingHappy.com. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Today's topic is chancla culture. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's the Latinos community way of discipline. Mrs. Salcines, how would you define chancla culture? I think um, all Hispanics can relate to the chancla. I remember when I was a little girl, my mother would never actually hit me with the chancla, but we would be, she would be on the phone and uh, my brother and I would be making noise and she would, you know, do the hand signal, like be, be quiet, let, you know, shush. And we wouldn't listen. And my mother would take off her chancla and throw it across the room. <laughs> so I know that other uh, Hispanic children ha have been spanked with the chancla. It's very typical of the mom taking off her chancla and spanking, you know. But I think the chancla, the whole idea with the chancla is more about the spanking, right? Mm -hmm. That's just part, spanking is part of the Latino community. It's like a form of discipline. It's a form of discipline, and it's something that it's been done over and over again, one generation after another generation. And and unfortunately, we parent the way we had we have been parented. So if you've been hit, and that has been that was how you were disciplined, that kind of tends to be the way you want to discipline your children. So what would you say is the difference between hitting and chancla culture? Well, it's, it's the same, right? Except the hitting is with the hand and the chancla and the belt is, is with an actual object, which almost, if you think about it, it makes it worse. Yeah, it's not just the chancla, it's the hanger. And I've also heard a lot of people use wooden spoons, like kitchen ones and yeah. um, other objects that you can find. And I'm not sure if it's because they think that in order for a kid to behave, you have to scare them by like the hitting and stuff like right. that or why they actually do it. I remember being in elementary in the 60s, okay? And we were doing um, spelling bees. Mm. And, and also we were doing, and in another case, this twice this happened to me, and another time we were doing our table, our multiplication tables. And I remember messing up and our teacher hitting us with a ruler when we would miss. The, the, the whole thing with hitting, with a chancla, with a belt, with a ruler, it was just that it was the only way that people knew how to discipline, how to get kids to behave. The problem with that, though, is that when you hit, the child remembers the hit and the pain and not necessarily the lesson. And that is what parents don't understand, right? You beat your child, you hit him, okay? You beat him, you spank him, and he's gonna remember the humiliation, he's gonna remember how he felt, he's gonna remember that it hurt, but will he remember the lesson? And that's what parents need to realize, that you know, when you hit, it's not, there's no lesson there except violence. And, mm -hmm. that's, and you don't wanna raise your child with violence. You don't want your child to think that violence is the way that's the way to get somebody to do something or that's the way to stop a behavior and i think especially in the latino culture sometimes love gets this label that it's violent like right. that's how you learn whenever you're a child you're like well my if my parent hit me they hit me because they love me right. and then you know you really take those lessons into other forms of life into your relationships with friends yes. and other forms of things i know during my time teaching and um, doing therapy that the kids would tell me that would get hit. They would tell me that really what ended up happening was that they were quite insecure. They turned more insecure and really didn't trust their parent because, you know, the person that they loved and that's supposed to care for them hit them. Yeah. 
And eventually what happens is that um, when they're little, the spanking with your hand or maybe with a chancla or, or with whatever might hurt, right? But as you get older, think about it, as you grow, that it's, it doesn't have the same response. You know, it doesn't hurt you the same way, right? You become, I don't know, you're bigger, you're stronger. And so it's more about the humiliation of getting hit, right? And then that resentment is built mm -hmm. in the child because there's some parents that hit their kids up to middle school. I mean, there's some parents that slap their kids. There's some parents that hit, you know, way beyond uh, just, you know, we, when we think of spanking, we think children, but no, there's a lot of parents that hit for a long time in a child's life, you know? Oh, wow. I think one of the, the legal implications of chunkla culture is that a lot of times Parents don't know that this form of discipline actually involves CPS at some moments in time. Yeah. Whenever I've been working, I know sometimes parents will be like, I don't understand why was CPS called? We, I was trying to discipline my child. And, you know, we have to explain that in the United States and especially in the Valley, you know, we have to be very careful about how far the chunkla culture goes because once it starts leaving marks, once the child is feeling unsafe in their home, and that definitely warrants child protective services to come in and having to remove the child. And sometimes, you know, the parent doesn't even isn't even aware that what they're doing is illegal and nevertheless traumatic. I think one of one of the most important things that we need in the valley as far as, you know, the, the parenting comes is that most of these parents don't know that there's a better way to do it. They just don't, they don't, they've never been taught. They've never seen something that, that can be done in a different way. I this feel is, like it's also kind of quicker. It's like grab whatever you can right then and there and boom. That is a good point to make. Yeah, yeah it's a quick like fix. It's, yeah, pretty much. But it, but it's like, okay, like if, if you a know. A quick fix for a long-term, you know. For, for a short exactly, term. For a short, for a short term, but yeah. the long-term effects. A, a that quick they have fix that, exactly yeah. that, that that leaves a long-term effect mm -hmm. on on the child mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you don't you know parents don't think about that they don't and um one of the things that um one of the things that parents fail to do is that they fail to reward the child for their good behavior we're I always getting after kids when they misbehave Right. I think a big misconception is that they should already behave that way. Right. They should already behave well. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I mean, if you don't if you don't explain it to a child, and that's one of the things when you spank, right? You spank them, and you tell them, "I'm spanking," you know, "I'm spanking you because you didn't do what I said." Go to your room or whatever, you know. But but what did the child learn? Like, really, did you talk to the child? Did you explain why it is that he's getting spanked? And it's also like they're not offering, you know, you can rather say this or like offering like alternative behaviors that they can work on rather than doing whatever they got in trouble for. Exactly. Exactly. The, the most important thing, one of the things that I teach in redirecting children's behavior is that, is that as parents, we need to learn how to redirect the issues that we have with our kids. Because the, I mean, if you think about it, there's so many ways, especially when the children are young, when they're five and six, that sometimes when they're very focused on one thing, you say something else and you redirect that thought and you almost like make them change their mind. It's like we as parents have to be one step in front of our kids. One step, you know, one th thinking ahead of them to see if we can get them to do what they want, you know, what we need them to do, but also for them to learn that that is the right thing to do and for them to want to do it. So when you spank, you don't really make the child want to behave. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you make that child resent you. Just get angry or... They get angry. Mm -hmm. um, they, they go to their room and they don't talk to you because you've hurt them physically and they shut down. And, and yes, the parent got their child to, I don't know, stop hitting their brother. But you told them not to hit and you hit them. True. And you're telling them not to hit. Yeah, Lots of mixed signals there. Exactly. Signals. Exactly. And like a, a child knows like a person who loves me shouldn't hit me and shouldn't do this. But then eventually it becomes so normalized that it's like, like Brooke said, like you learn that as like a form of love in a sense. And it's sad. 
And I think we could all agree that there's so much domestic violence going on these days that, <clears throat> Mm -hmm. You know, especially in the Latino community, the machismo, marganisma, it's yeah. very present, that form of, you know, abusive love. Like, I'm doing this because I love you. And that's definitely not right at all. Even, even yelling. Mm -hmm. we don't, we, we're talking about, you know, ch the chancla culture, but yelling is a form of abuse. I mean, there's some well, children the that is. they never, they're never talked at with with kindness i mean they're yelled at all the time and they're being told all the time what to do you know it's it, it's like the commands and so these kids are raised in homes where they don't feel they don't feel that love they don't feel that connection yeah and going off a point you were making earlier it's like they only get the attention with the negative behavior exactly. and so the parent doesn't want a reward for the positive behavior because it's things that they quote unquote should already be doing but then show all their attention towards the negative behavior putting in you know not just the attention but the effort to you know get up off the couch go hit them and it's like sometimes your kid's gonna want your attention and you know what they're gonna do they're gonna act out and that's where this generational cycle of you know attention love abuse they all start interplaying together it's funny because we we did say how like you know, generation of generation, we kind of got used to it. But my friend Mario Escobedo even said that he, once he went to a collective healing with Hispanic and Latinx folks, um, it was guided by Chicano and Mexican elders. They themselves viewed it as abuse. So it was um, he, like, we've already recognized that, but it still happens because it is so normalized. But the fact is, like, now that we're realizing, like, it is abuse, I think it's one step towards fixing these issues and maybe, like you said, redirecting um, discipline. Uh, one of the things that parents need to understand is that children are always in four behavior stages, you might think, okay? So when, when children want your attention, they do four things, okay? The, one of them is the power of attention. So kids that sometimes are in the power of attention will make you laugh, will act like clowns, or they'll break something or, you know, drop something on the floor or spill something to get your attention. Or they'll whine, mommy, 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 and they won't leave you alone. Okay, that's the power of attention. Then there's the power of, of um, revenge. And this is the power where your child is angry with you. And because they're angry and you've hurt them, maybe because you spanked them or maybe because they were hurt by the words you used towards them or whatever, they want to hurt you back. And so they will hit or they will um, say, I don't love you. I hate you. I don't want to be in this home. They'll say things to hurt you back. Then there's the child that is that is in avoidance. OK, in the stage of avoidance. This is the child that that you're always constantly having to push and say, uh, Brooke, please, Brooke, get up and put your shoes on. And Brooke is going, no, mommy, I don't want to put my shoes on. You, No, I can't do it. And then they, the child goes on and on about how they can't do the shoes. And the mom comes along and eventually just puts the shoes on because it's quicker to put her shoes on than to move on, you know? Mm -hmm. So kids are always in different stages. And so as parents, we need to learn you know, what is my child telling me by their behavior? Instead of, oh, my child is misbehaving, let me spank my child. No, every time your child misbehaves, you need to ask, what is my child? What are his needs? What does he need? Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of times parents are like, why are you bothering me? Or like, why don't you know any better? Exactly. And like, <clears throat> if your child is, is nagging you since the minute you walked in the door and your child has not left you alone and, and your child is, you know... I mean, he's after you, walking behind you, and you're and you feel like, oh, he's pestering me. He's oh, he's misbehaving. No, that child needs your attention. Mm -hmm. That child has missed you. That's why I always tell moms when you get home from work, give your child fifteen or twenty minutes of undivided attention, and then go on and do anything else. Go on and start dinner, or go on and do something else, because giving that child fifteen or twenty minutes of attention will allow you to do whatever you need. And I think a great tip I learned during a parenting class is whenever your child gets home from school and you get home from work, 
The first thing that you ask your child should not be how school went because for them, school is so stressful and it's like their version of work. It's like you getting home from work and then being like someone asking you, tell me all about how work went. And when work is the last thing you want to talk about. And sometimes I think the conversation of school kind of doesn't really give the child the ability to talk about their own personal interests, what they're excited about other than school, or like what things are they interested in aside from school? Because to them, sometimes school could be quite boring. And I think uh, what I've gotten feedback from is my parents have said that those things are really great for them to implement on their children because they've been able to learn about things that their children like and have these conversations. Because a lot of times it's like, how did school go? Oh, well, you know, the kid didn't do his homework or this. And then it starts turning into a lecture rather than a conversation. And it just seems like every conversation is then a lecture. Mm -hmm. So definitely I've learned that whenever your kid comes home from school, you know, ask them about anything else other than school. What are they excited to do on the weekend? What are their personal interests? And that way they could really connect with the child or child or leave it open-ended you know how was your day today sweetie you exactly know, like, boom and let them talk and if they're quiet give them that quiet like that time to just kind of like i don't know detox because mm -hmm. when you come home from work or you come home from school you're you're mm -hmm. you are stressed out and you need that alone time maybe mm -hmm. you know, definitely do that it's, it's kind of sad because today i was on instagram and um i came upon this kind of like a TikTok thing of um, a first day of virtual kindergarten learning with like Hispanics. And the mom was literally like trying, was next to her kid on the computer, or whatever, with the belt in her hand. And like in the audio, it was like laughter because it's so normal, normal, <laughs> normalized. Yeah. And it's just sad because a, a lot of other people can relate and they're reposting it because it's like, oh, yeah, like we totally understand what's going on. But that's so sad because that, I feel like that's not a way to help your child, especially a child who doesn't understand what he's learning and is having trouble. Like, how how are they going to know, like, what mm -hmm. the right way is to learn? You're just going to hit them like they're not going to want to learn, you know. Or she might have been hitting the child because he didn't want to stay in front of the computer because who maybe knows? he was getting up, who, whatever the reason. But the hitting does not, it doesn't teach anything. It's not, it, it, it doesn't justify what she's trying to do. Mm -hmm. Very and true. so that's the thing. That's where, but what you need to do is when your child misbehaves, you need to figure out why he's misbehaving. You need to figure out ways to help your child. If your child, sometimes when children get overwhelmed, they misbehave. So do quiet time. I don't like timeout. I love mm -hmm. quiet time. I think that everybody should have a space in their house where they have toys and blankets and, and favorite books and, 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 and a little corner where when the child is having a meltdown or when your child is misbehaving, you ask that child to go to quiet time. And, and when you ask them to go to quiet time, it's not about punishing the child. It's about the child relaxing and just like, just deep just letting it go this mm -hmm. way. And then you can tell the child, you know, when, whenever you're, when, whenever you stop crying, whenever you're not yelling at mommy and you're ready, then come, come and talk to mommy. Yeah. Cause it's important for children, especially children to learn healthy coping mechanisms. Right. And I think that's kind of really overseas. It's like really overseen a lot of times. It's like, you know, in order to build healthy coping mechanisms when you're adult, you kind of needed to learn them when you were a child, whether it's quiet time, reading, journaling, running outside. I mean, writing about crazy, funny stories, right. anything. I think sometimes, you know, it's really easy to go to the discipline. So I just looked up La Chancla, Chancla culture just out of curiosity. And um, on this website of laprensatexas.com, it said... La chancla is the secret of our culture. It is the most effective weapon known to a Latin kid. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even then in itself, they're saying it's effective, but they're also calling it a weapon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And some, it says on here, some kids have described it as a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. And I mean, and, and, and look, all of us, at one time or another, I don't want any mom out there to feel bad about losing control because I think as parents at one time or another, we have all lost control and walk, you know, and, and spanked our kids. And 
are we proud of it? Absolutely not. I, I know that I, I've never felt good. I know I've done it. You know, I've, I've lost control. I know I've spanked this one, you know, but it, it, you do it in a moment of just, you lose it. Okay. But, but that can't be how you discipline your children all the time. You know, that can't be what happens because one time that you, you know, we asked my husband, do you remember getting spanked? He can't remember getting spanked. I can't remember getting spanked. Have I gotten spanked? I probably was at some point in my life, but it wasn't the discipline that it wasn't how my parents disciplined me. My, our, the discipline that I got the most as a little girl was talks. My mm-hmm. mom was always about sitting me down and talking to me about why I should not have done that or why, what, you know, why this was not the right thing to do. And I remember that those talks sometimes hurt more <laughs> because of how I did, was disappointing her, exactly. or, you know, and, but I remember those talks. And so sometimes it's hard for people in the Rio Grande Valley and the Latino communities to have those talks because they were never given those talks. And, you know, they only had the chancla culture. So, of course, that's what they engage in. So what would you say are positive, healthy ways to talk to a child about their behavior? The most important thing is when your child misbehaves is find out why. Okay, because when a child is hungry, when a child is tired, when a child has had a bad day at school, when the child has been hurt by a sibling, they will misbehave. They will lash out. They will talk back. They will hit their brother. And, and so you, in order to discipline the child, you need to find out why is my child misbehaving, mm-hmm. okay? Then once you find that out, then you can take the, the, the right action, right? Mm-hmm. But let's say you do have a child that always seems to, I don't know, mischievous, that's always getting into trouble. That's always- The adventure. The adventure, you know, <laughs> that always, look for, with that child, my recommendation is to look for something positive that that child does. I remember one one mother in one of my uh, parenting classes, I kept saying, there's got to be something positive that you can say about your son. And she kept saying, there's nothing my son does. You know, there's everything he does is yell at me. He he hits his brother. He's irresponsible. He's this, he's that. And I'm saying, but you've got to think of something, something positive to say and say to him every day, come up with something positive to say to your child because that helps his behavior improve. So finally, she went home. One week later, we had a session and she said, Mrs. Sassing, you're gonna be so proud of me. I found something positive to say. And I said, well, what was it? She said, my son walks into the kitchen and when he was walking out of the kitchen, he always slams the door. But this time he remembered not to slam the door and he shut it quietly. He, she said, and I went after him And I said, thank you so much for not slamming the door. And she said, and he turned to me and he actually smiled. So that was a moment for her. And so every day that mom looked for something positive to say about her child. And eventually, the more positives you say to your child, the more his his behavior is going to improve. If you Mm -hmm. always focus on the negative, they're never going to improve their behavior because you're telling them they're bad. You're telling them they're misbehaving. But if you start telling them, thank you, son, for helping me do that. Thank you, son, for picking that trash up. Thank you, son, for helping your sister. I don't know, for helping your sister get in the car. Or thank you, son, for this. That child starts feeling good about himself and he's going to behave better. And a lot of times they're barely recognizing the things they do well. So if you start pointing it out, they're able to understand like, oh, maybe I am helpful. And, you know, because when someone's like, oh, like, what do you, you know, who are you or what, what do you do? Like a lot of times you just go completely blank. You're like, I have no idea what's good about me. And that goes for children as well. Exactly. Tell them what to do right, not what to do wrong. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we're always telling them what they do wrong. So that's something that, if you're going to remember something about this charla is to remember, tell them what to do, what they do right. You know, look for the good things that they do if, if you want. And that will help your child behave. That will help your child want to behave better. And then you don't have to engage in so much. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Then you don't have to spank, you know, encourage the good behavior and you're going to get more of that behavior. Thank you, Maria Lisa Salcines, for joining us today. And thank you all for listening to us. This was our first Charlas con Mental Monarchs. 
And we just finished our first episode. If you made it this far, make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Mental Monarchs and check out our blog, mentalmonarchs.com. We have cute merch, many resources and blogs and stories for those who are struggling with mental health issues.